<laughs> How's it going, everyone? I am Cream, and you're here for the first episode of Active Reload, a weekly show talking about everything there is in Gears of War. Joined by Ulite, Gandhi, Cloud, and Arctic. How you guys doing? Fantastic. How you doing? Great. So tonight we're going to talk. On, the look on hmm? Arctic's face explains how he's doing. He, he's in the zone. <laughs> he, he is ready to just go. Dude, no, look at that. Looks like he's going to. Is he frozen? <laughs> he could be frozen. That's what I thought he was frozen. Oh. Oh, What's up, guys? What's up? Perfect. All right. So, so uh, what are we going to start off with? You guys want to start talking about the uh, MLG settings? Discussions, what we're trying to do. No? Uh, to me? So what away. is the current state of the setting? Current state? Yeah. I know oh. M MLG is, is pretty much said that we are doing execution King of the Hill TDM and we've tried everything and tried to make it work, but TDM is just kind of not working at all. Like Even on Old Town, the best map, it's I've seen it play really slow. Like The last King of the Couch I did... Uh, Teams winning or losing were not moving. They were just, you know, sitting at the 50-yard line, just looking at each other. Nothing was going on. King of the Hill's playing great, minus, the, you know, the the random spawn issue that sometimes kills you, but it still works out great. And, you know, I love Russ Long. It's the best thing ever. Russ Long. Russ Long. Now, KL, I wanted to ask you uh, specifically, what do you think about Russ Long? Because you probably play more than the rest of us right now. Uh, Russ Long is interesting. I think that... Uh... At least for execution, I think that it's really promising. King of the Hill, it's exciting. Um, but, you know, the the obvious thing that a lot of people dislike about it right now is the silverback. So I think, uh, I mean, for us personally, um, our team, it didn't really affect us when we played Rust Long. Um, but we haven't really played a, against a team, uh, some of the higher caliber teams that could actually keep up with us Um to make it pop, you know what I mean? Because it has that, like, 4 minute and 30 second time or whatever it is, 4.40 or something like that. And uh, mm -hmm. we haven't really seen anything that uh, abusive from it. And then even when people do get in it, I mean, you just continually smoke it or you could just fire at it um, repeatedly and put it out. So, I don't know. It, it hasn't really affected our game um, a lot because we've played it. But I know new teams that play it automatically are angered or upset about it just because hey, it's a silverback. I think it's cheap. So, Right. Well, I mean, the way I see it, and this is after watching uh, NJ Halo, what was it, last week, two weeks ago? Uh, yeah, going? about two weeks ago, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it was Raw Talent versus, uh, like, two members of Infinity, Deadly, and uh, I forget who their fourth was. Supra. But Supra. Yep. And they pretty much, uh, you know, no disrespect to Raw Talent, but they pretty much smacked up Raw Talent on uh, Rustlung when I was watching. It seemed yeah. to me, eventually, Ribs did go crazy with the Gundam wing, but <laughs> the only way that happened is because Raw Talent was getting defecated on regardless, long before the, the, the robot came into play. <laughs> Silverback. I mean, am I right? Did anybody notice yeah. anything yeah, different? Yeah, I, like, I, mean, I, I saw that. I mean, they were getting outslayed pretty bad, so um, the, I, that was like icing on the cake, I think. So it was like they were already getting outslayed, and then you hop in the Silverback, and not only are you getting out slave, but then you got a little mechanical oh, no. Gundam running around tearing you up. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they kept leaving the Silverback alone. I don't understand that. They kept running. I don't know who kept running past it, but they would smoke ribs out of the Silverback, and then they would just walk past it after a reset and That's give it to them so. again over and over again. Yeah, that, that was the biggest like problem. So. Yeah, because I was commentating the whole thing, and, like, they were disabling the Silverback, smoking it out, clearing the whole area. Uh, they even killed ribs a few times. But then they just ditched the silverback and went for the hill, and then ribs respawned. I was like, oh, look, a silverback, and hopped right in it. <laughs> I mean, you have to abuse it. But I, I think Russ Long should be... I mean, I watched Clock Tower King of the Hill played. It's okay. Not, not really for me. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is is that MLG should not be considering TDM at all. No way, no questions asked. I, I mean, what, what's your take on it, Cloud or Yuli? Go ahead, Yuli. Um... I played at NJ Halo, played TDM, and and it, it's really hard to hear anything there since you don't have mix amps like you do at MLG or anything. 
and we would be up top on like Old Town. We we're playing Old Town, and I was up top, and we would kill two guys, not move up one inch, and then they would spawn behind us, and it was aggravating. Like I mean, you could pay attention. You have to be able to pay attention and you know actually see that they are coming. You can hear them, and they'll say like enemy forces too. But I did not hear it at all. They would just spawn behind you in two seconds, and then you know a good team would just take advantage of that, jump on you in two seconds, and that's it. You're done. And I really don't like TDM the way it plays out right now. It's now just, is, it needs to be fixed. Is that any map in particular, or is that just every map that you're... I know, I only uh, I only saw it on Old Town, unless uh, if you guys have been playing it, seen any other game that, on other maps. To be honest, when you started explaining that, the first thing that came to mind was Old Town, so I absolutely understand exactly yeah. what you're saying. And, uh, you know, I kind of agree, but it puts us in a bad situation when the most popular playlist uh, in the game we can't use in competitive play. Or at least that's the consensus right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel I'm kind of like at odds with it because I know it can be really slow, but I feel like there's a lot more control in, King, uh, in Team Deathmatch than any of the other game types, including Execution. You know, Execution is more like you smoke, you try to get, pop off one or two kills. Whoever has those first two kills at the very, very beginning opening rush can win. TDM is like you got to control the map. You got to control power weapons. You got to be, you got to have so many different things in mind. Um, I think the flow of the game is just slower, and people aren't used to that type of pace. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I feel like it's the most. It can be the most balanced, but because it's so slow, it becomes boring, and teams don't like camping. So right. I mean, I. I I don't know. It's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's hard to use because it's not really, really, really spectator-friendly for years. But at the same time, you can have a ton of control. Um, it's probably the most balanced, and that's how we felt. And anyone that's played TDM for other games knows that's how you. I mean, Gandhi, you know, that's how Halo is. You got to control the map. You have to control the flow of the game. I feel like that's how it is on years. But people don't like it because it's it's just not meant for gears. All right. I just don't think it's right for Gears of War professional players. I mean, you guys have been, it's been like just battered into your brain to just play things slow. I think if you guys could get rid of that mentality and just kind of turn it into more of a run and gun and actually have control, it would be fun to watch. But instead we see it's like a 50-yard line and then you guys have top control on Old Town and then the other team down low is kind of like, well, no point in push, pushing up because we're fucked. Right, kind of thing. right. And to be honest, uh, when uh, I was playing that game type before with any team, pretty much, actually, since Gears of War 3 came out, it seems that you have more success kind of playing uh, as fast as you can, as long as you're just being smart about it. So it's got that going for it, but I can't see too many people just uh, even moving out of the base if they don't have to when there's some serious money on the line. And I think all of us understand, mm -hmm. like, okay, once you see two, like, top-tier teams play uh, a specific game, Every time you see AM teams or teams that don't know how to play the map the same way play, they play, like, completely different. It'll be, like, night and day. So, like, you're talking about the pace of the game, James. I remember watching, mm -hmm. I think it might have been NJ Halo. I watched a TDM, um, and I, I think we saw one where it went kind of by kind of fast, teams going back and forth, and then the next team, teams that played weren't teams that, anyone really knew they uh, obviously the players probably didn't practice very much and the game gameplay was just awful to watch and that's how it's right. been for execution king of the hill tdm <laughs> it doesn't matter so if the teams don't know how to play the game they play it at their own like little pace they kind of play slower it's not as fun to watch so i think that's also part of the problem gotcha so everybody learn to play the game play fast <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like the, it's the mentality, though, not to cut you off, Krim, because I could see you were taking that breath to get ready, but um, uh, <laughs> you, you saw that too, you was like, <gasps> all right. <laughs> um, but I, I think like the amateur teams kind of play to not lose, and the pro teams kind of play to win. I, I think right. that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, a lot I of, like that distinction. Yeah, a lot of the problems I saw at the King of the Couch when they were doing uh, the TDM on Old Town was, it was like they were afraid to move. Even if they were winning, had power weapons, and had every advantage they could think of, they didn't move. And I just didn't understand it. And I even yeah. saw teams were like, where they were on the bottom half of that, where they had nothing. They had so many opportunities to move up and make something happen, and they just didn't. It was, like, it was just afraid to move, and I don't know why. Right. You're not lying. Korean, I don't know. I, uh, hmm? I like this. I like this thing <laughs> going on. 
The yeah, goatee. I saw that too. It looks like I'm... I've had this for years. Really? <laughs> what do you yeah. mean, really? It's different somehow. <laughs> it's different. I don't know. Maybe I trimmed it. I don't know. You've grown into it. <laughs> <laughs> You've matured. Oh, man. But yeah, but when, the, but when the camping gets bad on TDM, maybe, you know, what I was talking about before, how they start spawning. I mean, they start spawning behind you. Maybe that has something to do with that. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how the game works, like the mechanics of the, you know, <laughs> of the spawns work. Maybe they're like, oh, you, this guy's been in this place for like too long. Let's spawn people behind him if somebody dies. <laughs> so, I mean, that might be good. What do you guys think about them opening up spawns? Uh, and I brought this up way back when, um, when I actually had a conversation with Quinn back in August or whatever. And I said, look, TDM is good, but what do you, are you guys thinking about like making king spawns for TDM? Would that help at all? Would that make it a little bit better? Um, what do you guys think about that? Like, here, here's the thing that I don't like about it, and it works. It doesn't work in ranked because they use the 30 second timer, um, but it works, I think, in privates because the the weapon swaps are um, on pickup after pickup, rather. Is that right? No, yeah, it's not after pickup. Yeah, is it? Is it after, no, whatever it is. Uh, after use. Oh. Um, but uh, what do you guys think about the spawns if they try to change it so you have more spawn opportunities in TDM? Would that make it better? Uh, I thought about that, and I just, that's one of those things I have to see it before I could really give an opinion on it, because I thought that might help, but you never know. It could speed it up, because, I mean, imagine if you're in TDM, you're trying to set up in a line, and all of a sudden they spawn, like, right to the left of you, instead right. of, you know, a top or bottom, because that's pretty much how it is. I think, uh, do you remember before they came out with the update where it told you when the next hill was going to come, like, where it was in the last 10 seconds, do you remember how kind of difficult it was at the very beginning to find those hills? I imagine if they had, like, the spawns kind of like the hills. Because if you think about it, in Team Deathmatch, the other team is the objective. So if they spawn like the hills did before the, uh, the update came out where they told you where the hills are, it would be a little bit more challenging. You'd have to cover more ground, and it wouldn't be as easy to find them. Yeah, it would, it would definitely I mean, speed it up. I agree with that. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's something that I think is worth trying. Um, but, I mean, TDM is so popular as it is, I don't really see it something... That, as something that Epic would consider doing. Um, I know some of the updates in TU3, we're going to see, um, and this is on a completely different topic, but I know, like, just on the topic of changes, I know that they're supposed to uh, have the man-up rule be an uh, option now yeah. in the private, so uh, you'd be able to flip it on or off in private. So, I mean, if they can do that, maybe they can flip spawns. I don't know. I'm just hypothetical. That would be nice. So... Kind of like Halo options, or yeah. Halo you can do with like anything. Anything. Yeah, yeah. and just ruin the game completely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no offense, not 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 attacking Kill KC, but it's just a whole different game. But on the topic of the spawn, um, I, I think the thing that would be good about it is, is like when you have those random spawns, like assuming that you don't like, you know, first guy doesn't influence his teammate spawn, where it's just kind of sporadic. It gives a, a player that clutch factor. So if you spawn behind three of them, and you're like, all right. I, it is my time to shine, and you fail. Like It's like clear-cut. It's like you are the reason your team lost. You were in a perfect position, and you blew it. And I think that's going to happen more and more, so awareness has to be increased, and then you also have you know, that clutch factor being placed. Because when you know where the team's spawning, there isn't really like a clutch factor. It's like, okay, well, uh, we have to throw all of our smokes, uh, hope to God they stun them, and then we got to push. Right. I, I, I just like the clutch factor of it. Mm -hmm. And then the one, the one thing to also think about with that is if the spawns become random, you don't need a five-second buff um, for the invincibility. And then some people, you know, are, I would actually prefer if you shot, the uh, invulnerability was gone. But, uh, I, you know, I actually heard that Epic had it originally like that. But uh, they said people didn't recognize or didn't realize that it was even there. So it, it didn't matter either way. But... Um, I think that that would also be a factor because that would that you know that'd be a thing for the clutch factor. If you spawn behind them, but you have the respawn invulnerability and you fuck <laughs> up, <laughs> then it's definitely your fault. So, yeah. I don't know. TDM yeah. is is that, it might be a lost cause. I don't. I, it's, you know, it's it's really hard for me to fight for it right it's now. It's just that it, if it doesn't get changed the way it is now, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work competitively. It just it just won't. And you brought up a good point, Gail. I mean, the, in, in every game, especially shooters, if you have a spawn shield and you start attacking, you lose that spawn shield. I don't understand it. why it's any different in Gears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. All right, so right now... Uh, moving forward. Oh, 
Yeah, right now, I want to bring up the female character debate. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. It's been going back right, and forth. Before we start this, yep. who plays this female character out of us five? I need every advantage I can get. Right? <laughs> Don't give me that look like. Don't give me that look like. Oh man, this guy. You know, like he's totally a douchebag. No, all right. One, Anya is beautiful. Okay. Two, I need my. So advantage. you like watching a beautiful creature getting destroyed over and over? Again? <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know. Oh, man. Oh, man. The funny thing is, like, thing, I get it. Like, I'm the loser. Just, uh, whatever. Like, nobody <sighs> noticed anything until somebody said something about that. Or somebody did that YouTube video with that Theron Guard and then Anya. But Theron Guard's, like, just, they're huge. Even in Gears 1. In Gears 1, where you're, like, General Ram, a Theron Guard, what, Cold Train? And, Cold Train was huge, too, yeah. And who yep. else on the cog? I think that was it. And, you know, they had active sniper downs. And you'd be over cover, like right on cover, <laughs> and that little little hump. You oh wait, no, Hoffman snipe somebody right? down, or even the cape. Nobody played as a Theron guard. Nobody. It was Ram like cape. one of the the number one rules, the basics. Mm -hmm. You get stuck with a torque bow and Ram's cape. It was over. Yeah, the I think the most bothersome thing, and you know, I, and this is all about the evolution of the game and how how things. Uh, you know, kind of change, but when we first started, it was, and this has just been a staple Gears rule. I don't know why it's been changed. I don't know why teams aren't doing it. Everybody picked a different character. Mm -hmm. And then month number two, month month in October, you know, people started picking females a little bit. Yep. November comes, and we're scrimming against all female teams, and I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Why is everyone Anya? Why is everyone Sam? There was no, <laughs> there was no one picking any uh, of the male characters at all. So I think at that point, I was like, all right, we need to seriously take a look at this, because I saw the video when it first got released, and then we, we started to mess around with different weapons. So the first guy, the first guy um, that video that, that got shown, it was just with the sniper, right? So I was like, all right, it must be every single um, weapon that goes into first person. So then I'm like, well, that probably means the hammer burst is screwed, you know, one shot, whatever. And then he ended up releasing another video showing the, uh, the hammer burst as well. So, um, you know, it doesn't just affect that weapon, but I think it's also going to, if it affects pistols, um, you know, people have this thing to female character sponge. I, I don't know, man. It's, it's. It's a mess, I think. Uh... Here, like, to bring it back into, like, to noob territory here, which is <laughs> me, um, I, I don't get... Okay, so uh, Epic claims that the hitbox is the same, correct? That is, like, it's actually, still the same? Actually, Rod uh, Ferguson said on the stream um, that they are not the same. But... Pete and Quinn are saying that they're the same, but Rod said on his live stream that they're the same, and something like, uh, so what, they're the same. He said, those were the effect of his words uh, when, when he talked about it in the stream. 